Our final type of special quadrilateral is a kite. So let's talk about kites now. A kite is a quadrilateral with two pairs of consecutive sides congruent and no opposite sides congruent. So in our figure to the right over here, you can see that the top two segments are congruent to each other and the bottom two segments are congruent to each other. The one thing that we don't have are opposite sides that are congruent. So notice that these opposite sides are not congruent to each other. That's a very important part of the definition of kite, that no opposite sides are congruent. Which now we have our first theorem about kites, and actually our only theorem about kites. We call it the diagonals of a kite theorem. Imagine that says that if a quadrilateral is a kite, then its diagonals are perpendicular. So if KITE is a kite, which we can tell by the markings it is, then segment KT is perpendicular to segment IE. Namely, their diagonals are perpendicular. Woohoo! We get to prove this! Isn't that fun? I love proofs. So let's see here. We're given that KITE is a kite. Now, if I was really smart, instead of stating that K-I-T-E was a kite as my given, I would have applied to the definition, which would have allowed me to say that segment K-I is congruent to segment K-E. But I wasn't very smart in doing that. Once again, this is the definition of a kite. Now, I'm going to run with this really quickly and then come back to the other one. I remember a little while ago that if a point is equidistant from the endpoints of a segment, and that's exactly what it means for a segment KI and segment KE to be congruent, then the point has to be on the perpendicular bisector. So we know that point K is on the perpendicular bisector of segment IE, and that is the converse of the perpendicular bisector theorem. That's about as far as I can go with that. So now I'm going to go back and use the definition of a kite again on the other pair of congruent consecutive sides. So by using the definition of a kite, I can now say that segment TI is congruent to segment TE. And likewise, using the converse of the perpendicular bisector theorem, I can now say that point T is on the perpendicular bisector of segment IE. Oh, now wait a minute. Point K and point T are both on the perpendicular bisector of IE. Do you remember a postulate clear back in chapter 1 that said two points determine a line? That was the two points, one line postulate. And notice that I have two points. One is K, and the other one is T, and they are both on the perpendicular bisector of segment IE. That means that segment KT those two points, is the perpendicular bisector of segment IE. And hence, by definition, segment KT is perpendicular to segment IE. A quick and easy proof. So now let's find the measures of some angles in kites. Well, with our last theorem, the quick and easy angle to start with is actually angle 3 because we just learned something about the diagonals of a kite, namely that they are perpendicular. So we know that the measure of angle 3 has to be 90 degrees, because perpendicular lines meet at right angles. Right angles have measures of 90 degrees. What else can we say here? Well, I'm noticing something interesting. What kind of triangle is triangle SRL? It has two congruent sides, which makes it an isosceles triangle. And the isosceles triangle theorem says that the base angles are congruent. So the measure of angle 2 has to equal the measure of angle RLS. How does that help us, you ask? Well, I'm noticing I know two of three angles in a triangle. So using the triangle angle sum theorem, 
it shouldn't be that hard to figure out that the measure of angle RLS is 42 degrees. 180 minus 90 minus 48 is 42 degrees, which then takes us back to the fact that the measure of angle 2 is 42 degrees by the substitution property of equality. Well, wait a minute. If angle 3 is 90 degrees, doesn't this angle over here also have to be 90 degrees? And this is 42 degrees, so that should help us find the measure of angle 1. Because if we take that 90 degrees and the 42 degrees, which happens to the, me the measure of angle 2, and all, add all three of those together, we get the measure of angle 1. So the measure of angle 1 is going to be 48 degrees. Easy enough. Definition of perpendicular, the triangle angle sum theorem used twice.